Hey everybody, how's it going? This is your cornerman in the corner with Kayla Racho. Pronounced Ra it right. Oh, see, and I did it wrong there. See, all right, whatever. <laughs> what I realized, Kayla, after all these all these years, I don't think I know how to pronounce your last name correctly. Oh my gosh, well, I'm gonna let give me try you it. No, don't no hints. <laughs> Rocco Racho. You actually got it on the first try. That's oh, very I should I should have just rolled the dice and went with it. Yeah, I don't know how you got that because it, it's <laughs> like what it looks. Yeah, my last name is pronounced Rocco. Anyway, how you doing? It's so good to see you. It is so good to see you, Quinn. I miss you a lot. So I'm I glad to too. be able to catch up with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to do this with you all, all the time. I love it. I, this is part of the reason why I did it. You know, I miss it. I want to talk with my friends. I want to check in, see how it's going. And I want to be part of the community again. So that's kind of why I did it. So, uh, so what's going on? Uh, do you have anything coming up? I do. Actually, one month. I'm one month out. Great. I, um, March 24th in Miami for Combate. Awesome. Awesome. Can't wait. Maybe I could try to get there. That's fantastic. I'm glad. Training's going well, obviously. Yeah, it's training like really good. To be honest, it's, it's better than ever. Um, so I, I'm really excited to showcase some new skills in this next fight. I've been working my butt off. For a long time, man, long time. Um, I haven't fought for almost a year, so I've had a long layoff. Um, but in that time, I haven't stopped working, as I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. getting better everywhere. So uh, I'm really excited to show out in one month. It's so funny. Uh, you just touched two things. Whenever people say, like, would you really say if it was going bad? You know, especially a month out, you don't know who's watching, right? <laughs> but... Yeah, maybe not. Eh, I'm usually pretty honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm at 70%. But, you know, it's so funny. Whenever we have those layoffs, I know when I had those layoffs, I had two long layoffs in my career off of injuries. Mm -hmm. And you really, if you're doing it right, if you're doing this career right, which I know you are, you just gain somewhere else. You make gains. You're totally, you're, you just can't help but be a better fighter because, you know, you're training, you're coming back, whether it's coming back from injuries or coming back from you know, just just the layoff in general. Who knows? Life happens. Mm -hmm. you just, you're, you're, you, you, the pressure's off working on those things you don't want to work on or you're not good at because that's when, you know, you're you're gonna have fun with it. Like I remember, I hated striking. I hated boxing. Um, and and when I had when I broke the bones of my face, you know, I, I had to learn how to move. I knew how to punch. I didn't know how to box. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't know how, I didn't know how to move my head. I had no footwork. I was square. And it, that forced me to do that. It was, it was, I mean, injuries are never good, but it was the best thing that ended up happening to my progress. So Yeah, for sure. You know, layoffs can be tough for some people, depending on the situation. For me personally, I mean, as a lot of people know, I started MMA five years ago and I just kind of yeah. dove in. I had so much to learn. I had, you know, so much, I had a huge lack of experience. So <laughs> Uh, even as an amateur, I fought like every six weeks as a pro, I was so adamant about making it to the next level that I just stayed busy. I took every fight that was offered to me and, you know, I, I'm, I don't have regrets. I am glad that I did it, but it was kind of time for me to take a step back and, and focus on honing in on some specific skills, um, before getting back out there. And I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so ready um, I feel like a whole different fighter and I know a lot of people say that and I'm sure they mean it, but, um, I've just, I've grown in, in every area of my life and I'm happy. You know, I, I enjoy training. Uh, I'm motivated every single day. I'm not just coming in here and going through the motions. I'm, uh, very, what's the word I'm looking for? I, tr I train with intention and, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just so excited. You're very adamant about your training. That's just, you said it, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's what I love to hear. Um, you know, it's, it's so, it's so easy to go through the motions, like you said, you know, it's, it's not all the time that we can, you know, put that stuff aside and uh, just, oh, you know, it's just like make today count, you know, don't, you know, don't count the rounds, make the rounds count. Yep. That's, that's how it's got to be. And uh, you've always been really good with that. I know you've kind of gotten down on yourself before I've seen that, but you know, you were very resilient. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and you, like you said, staying busy. Uh, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I didn't want to hear it from nobody, especially when I was winning. You know, I don't want to hear it. I'm doing this. I'm going to get to the next one. And I remember um, my, my, my fourth fight, my third fight. No, my fourth fight ever was for Bellator. They needed me to film for somebody. I'm like, I don't care. I'm doing this, man. I fought a guy with 20 fights, you know, and 
yeah, I won, but now you know, I'm never going to fight a guy with four fights like myself again. So, like, sometimes it's like, even though you can, doesn't mean you have to, you know. And I'm sure that you've hit that roadblock, too. And then you're like, wow, now I'm in this, I'm in with the big dogs going forward. And sometimes it is just best to listen to who's around you. I'm sure you've had fights where you took and they went your way and your coaches were like, oh, I don't think this is the smart move right now. Oh, you kind of froze there, Kayla. You there? Is it me or you that's frozen? Hey, you there? Yeah. Can you oh, hear sorry. me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Were you hearing me that whole time? Because you were like... I, I could hear you. I'm actually in the wrestling room right now, so... Oh, I got Oh, okay. Best service. Best I place got you. in the Mako gym. Right? Wrestling. Mako exactly. wrestling. Yeah, I love that place. That came after me, but all well, towards the end. <laughs> but I uh, yeah, I, that's there's nothing. Like I think I was saying that, like, you know, my my pro career. I mean, I I've definitely had some ups and downs. I don't think I necessarily made the best decisions, uh, as you kind of said. Like, you tend to, as fighters, like we're we're tough. We're we're you know, we want to prove ourselves. So yeah. any challenge that comes to us, like, we don't want to deny it. You know what I mean? We, mm -hmm. we, we want to show who we are. We want to show that we're better. We want to challenge ourselves. So, um, you know, I've definitely taken fights that I probably shouldn't have taken. I certainly haven't tried to, like, build my record or fight a bunch of bums. Um, a lot of times I was going into people's hometowns or home countries. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. But you know what? I I wouldn't trade trade that experience for anything. Um, it I I've really had to pick myself up and and remind myself why I do this and why I love this and you know why I want to keep going. And I think I think it's been good for me to kind of explore those areas in my life. You know, not just in in sport and competition, but in life in general. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you on that. You know, I'm, I'm a, a piece of me, even though I wish I did. I, took the smart fights once in a while, but a piece of me is very proud that I always went after the biggest challenge. You know? Yeah. And I, so I know exactly what you mean. I knew exactly where I stood. A lot of times it didn't go my way. Not, not a lot of times it went my way. Sometimes it didn't go my way. Like you said, someone's home country, someone's hometown. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, all this training, it went that way. So mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Uh, but, you know, we do have a career to look after. So, you know, mm -hmm. you know, gotta, gotta, gotta weigh the options, you know, we gotta weigh the sure. options. And, and listen to those around us, you know, whether it's managers, coaches, you know, who's in our best interest. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's something, well, I didn't really work with a manager, especially towards the later half of my career. And um, so that's something that, you know, I, I, but I was very good with trusting my coaches and stuff like that, like you are. Yeah. So, um, I know, yeah, you got a great community around you. I mean, I see all the pictures. Who, who are you training with a lot in the last few weeks? To be honest, man, our team has changed so much. Mm -hmm. Just recently, we've gotten so many small really, really talented girls. So um, I've had the opportunity to train with girls my size, which has been huge for me to just kind of test my skills and, uh, you know, work, have opportunities to work on my offense more. Um, you know, a lot of people know that it's amazing to train at American Top Team, but what people don't understand is when you're kind of an up and coming fighter training with the best people in the world, it can be tough. Yeah. <laughs> it can be tough to um, you know, work on your offense and, and kind of learn what it feels like to dominate an opponent, you know? So I think that for a while, that was kind of a, a piece that I was missing in my training just because I was like on the match trying to survive all the time with uh, UFC girls, you know, girls with 20 pounds on me. So that was tough. But uh, recently we, we've gotten a new wave of girls that are super talented and they're my size. So it's been really, really helpful. Um, some of them are Elise Anderson. She is mm -hmm. a one championship fighter. We have a girl named Jordana who is a scrappy little wrestler from Pennsylvania. It's been so amazing working with her every single day. We just got a, another new Adam Wheat na named L Wagman from uh, Missouri. So man, we just keep building and building and it's good. We've got a really good crew here. Yeah, you know, 
I could just tell just by this conversation how much more experience and how much you're, you're just blossoming, you know. Um, I know exactly what you mean. You want to go against these tough people. You didn't uproot. <laughs> you didn't uproot your wonderful, comfortable life. And you're from Jersey, right? Yeah, Pennsylvania. In Jersey, to move down to South Florida. Yeah. Pennsylvania, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. From Pennsylvania to come down here and take a shot to train with whoever. You came to train with the best. Like so yeah. I get it. now it's like sometimes like I know I've had rounds where literally ev I had days where every round or I've had weeks where every round is against somebody who's ranked top ten in the world. Yeah. And it gets to the point, especially when you're tired. I'm not talking to the end of the day, I'm talking the end of the week, your body can't keep you just you, you need to stay in your comfort zone to get through the round. So you're not really growing as a as an athlete. Like, yeah, you know you're tough. We all, everyone knows you're tough. You know, like you're here, you're there. You know, you're a mainstay there. You know, so you really do have to work with people that you know. It's not that they're a pushover or a smart round. Maybe they're good here, where you could try to focus on this window that you need to work on. A yeah. lot of athletes and coaches, you know, like I, when I was coaching the amateur team, I made sure that I put the the, the fighters. I was calling the kids, but the fighters in that situation the best I could where they would force them to work what they what they're getting away from when they're not good at. Because uh you, you gotta develop. You gotta be the ultimate fighter. That's that's what it comes down to. No, for sure. I mean a lot of people say like you kinda need rounds where you're getting pushed and the person is a lot better than you and you also need rounds where, you know, you you're kind of more skilled than the other person and you're able to kind of work your offense and, and work the things you want to work. So I finally feel like I'm at a place where I think I just have more partners and I think it's also, I'm more skilled, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm not the new on the mats anymore. And um, man, I, I've been working my butt off for almost five years now here at ATT every single day and I, I can feel it paying off. So I'm looking forward to being able to show that progression in the cage. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's, make sure you enjoy the ride. <laughs> that's that's definitely part of it. You know, one thing that always stuck out about you, not not just your boxing, but your footwork is fantastic. It was like the best in the gym when I was there. You know, I mean, that can't be taught, but it can be improved. Mm -hmm. What did you do? What's some of the stuff you did to work on your footwork, cutting angles and stuff like that? That's actually a really good question. Um, to be honest, I don't know if it's like a specific drill I was doing. I, I can honestly say that when I started boxing, I was training in Reading, PA. I was training mm -hmm. in Allentown, so in Philadelphia, so very inner city gyms. And mm -hmm. the thing that comes to mind is like, first of all, I was always training with really, really good people, even if they were like 12 years old. I mean, these kids were yeah. so, they were slick. And they always had Spanish music playing in the gym. And I, this sounds so corny, but I really feel like that helped me improve my boxing. Because instead of like, you know, it's important to be technical, but you also have to be loose and you have to move and you have to have fun. And I feel like hearing that music and just kind of like going with the flow, it, it helped me mm -hmm. to kind of create this new style where I'm technical, but I'm also loose and and you know can move and i don't know man that's my style of dancing i can't dance for crap yeah. but my boxing is how <laughs> and and it's it's pretty fun to watch <laughs> yeah i i can't i can't box or dance so um <laughs> but i know that i you remind me i used to go down to the bronx and i used to train with aaron davis in pelham and uh and, P and pelham bay boxing and he would He's like, man, you're so slow, Ryan. Like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, you just like, thank God you're strong. He's like, it's, yeah, right? it's so funny. Like, I'll hear, I'll hear a lot of times uh, where, um, where like, boxers will start wrestling. Like, dude, I love this. I'm addicted. Yeah. You'll never hear a wrestler say that about boxing. You will never like, hear they like, oh, like, oh, I'm just too slow. I mean, and that being said, and unfortunately, this wasn't until later in my career when I was training with George regularly. Like, yeah. well, midway through my career where I'm like, I'm just, I can't keep up with him. If I chase him down, he's going to create angles. And I remember mm -hmm. just these quick Dominican kids from the Bronx would just beat the crap out of me. Like you said, like they like 12, 13, 14 years old. I'm a 21 year old man. I'm getting pieced up. It's yeah. embarrassing. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, and, uh, I would gym in like high heels and a business suit after my full-time job. And every mm -hmm. single day they'd put me in the ring to spar with these like 10 11 year old boys and they would beat the crap out of me yeah, <laughs> I would yeah. work the next day with two black eyes and like i did it every day 
I did it every single day. And like, man, that that's, that's how I got better. Yeah. Got to go through it. You know what yeah, I mean? You gotta have to keep yeah. And I, I would, all, I would watch people a lot. I, I would watch people. I would try to copy them. I, I mean, it sounds weird, but it's true. Like mm -hmm. I would watch people in the gym and I would try to throw a punch the way they were throwing. I would try to move the way they were moving. And, and I truly feel like that's how, that's how I learned. You know, um, you just brought to my next point where what I learned watching, it's really, it's true. Like you could really do like study tape and stuff uh -oh. or to do it. Oh, we did. Are oh, you breaking up again? You got me? No, I, I got you. Okay. So, yeah. um, what, what, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. I watched, I remember this helped me. This is probably before you even knew about this word, but Randy Couture versus Chuck Liddell won. How Randy beat Chuck because Chuck was known for his counter strike and catch people coming in, and like Randy was not he had no footwork either wrestling. I like the lateral movement. That's what I would do. This is what I need to do against somebody like you. I need to use lateral movement to cut you off from the cage. I need to make you paint yourself into a corner so I could score cheap punches that probably aren't going to knock you out, but it's going to score to get your hands to come up so I could shoot underneath. You know, to me. That's what I would do against somebody like you. Like that's the that's the, the visual I would get. So I would watch Randy. Some people that you would watch. Boxing or MMA. Either one. Either one. Yeah. I used to love watching Roy Jones Jr. I'll never move like him, but I used to love watching him. But... I'll be honest. I don't watch film that much. I feel mm -hmm. like. I, for whatever reason, it's it's harder for me to like watch on TV and and try to like copy a style. I I more so like to watch people around me in person, um, and I'll literally like I, it might be super creepy, but I'll literally watch them and like try to mimic what they're doing right there, <laughs> and I'll even yeah. ask them. To, but I'm more of like a I would prefer to study people in person. Um, when I watch fights, I, I try to kind of watch it. Not really as a, yeah, kind of, kind of as a fan, you know, I don't, I don't study fights or, or fighters too much, but I like to, I like to watch my teammates, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. I, I have so many people to learn from here. Mm -hmm. I mean, countless people, even people I don't know, you know, but I'll watch them. I'll watch how they train. Even like something <laughs> funny I, I tell people is, you know how we have like a ton of Russians here at the gym. Yeah. yeah. Hardest workers here. And mm -hmm. like after wrestling practice, I'll see them like off to the side doing planks and wall sits. And I'm like, I'm going to go join them. And I do, I, I, I go join them and I, I make myself one of them, you know, and mm -hmm. they might think I'm weird, but I don't care. You know, eventually I kind of earn their respect by, you know, they, they look at me and they say, Oh, she wants to work hard. You know, she, she wants to do that extra work. She wants to learn. And man, I, I just constantly try to surround myself with people who are doing the most, you know, learn from everybody yeah. around me yeah you got to keep showing up like you were like me like i was a walk on there and you know yeah you gotta just keep showing up you got to pay your dues like anything in life you got to pay your dues and then eventually i know i remember one time when um i went back to school and i needed i i, I needed me time so to speak and i i, I was like oh. i was like coach coach brownie conan dean you got to help me i got classes you're inspiring blah, blah, blah. and like all right We'll figure it out. Just make sure you can get a body. And like, and that's, that's exactly what happened. You know, people will be there for you if you're there for them. You know, you, you, sure. you, you get back what you put in at all levels too. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like that and everything. Like that's why MMA should, could show us so much about life, right? <laughs> any, oh, any style of training. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think um, I, I really feel like I paid my dues. You know, I, I've showed up every single day for the past five years. I've, I've helped pretty much everyone in this gym. Um, I show up, I work hard. Uh, yeah, man, that's paying your dues. You know, you, yeah. you can't expect to receive if, if you're not giving. And, um, and I was helping myself by doing that too. You know, even though days were tough and I wasn't necessarily getting a lot of guidance then, but mm -hmm. like I was still better. Even though yeah. I was surviving for a long time, I was still getting better. And, you know, I, I truly do feel it paying off and and it took years and years and years but sometimes that's what it takes you know you have to invest yeah. in yourself and to see the results you know i just want to say for people that are on here asking questions 
feel free to DM me and I will answer any I can. Well, we, we can answer we can answer some of these right now. I just I was actually I, just about to ask you that. Yeah, I don't know if I can like scroll up and look at them, but I did see a couple questions and I just I don't want people to think I'm ignoring them. Man, it is hot in here. Whew. Let's I just got done training, guys, so please don't mind my crazy hair. Are you kidding me? I thought you just, like, dolled yourself up. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> this is, like, dirty hair. <laughs> but thanks, Ryan, for saying I look pretty. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. I know, I know how gross we can all get being oh. at that gym. Sean, right. thank you. My homie. Cosmic Starman, when's the aliens coming? I'm thinking they'll intervene when World War Three happens. And then he talks about some of his friends. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see what don't else be, we got. Don't PM me about that, please. <laughs> yeah. I don't I do not do aliens either. Yeah, right. <laughs> One thing that, like, freaks me out. <laughs> I hope the aliens don't come. Let's see. How do you balance your way through a fight camp with work? What the best job is to have, in your opinion? What's the best job to have, in your opinion? You That's can get good... the best out of that camp. Carly Joe. Like, what is the best job to make money during camp? Mm -hmm. I would say waitressing or bartending, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, when I first moved here, I would, I mean, I've always trained full time and it's not always easy. <laughs> Sometimes it feels impossible, but it's not, it's possible. I, I would train full time Monday through Friday and then Friday night through Sunday, I would basically work full time uh, as a waitress and I would make enough money to pay the bills and, and that's about it. Um, man, being a fighter is tough sometimes though, you know? Yeah. I don't think people realize that, whew, it is a sacrifice. Like you have to be, a lot of times, like if you don't come for money or you know, get signed to a big organization right away. Like you have to kind of be willing to be broke to take that yeah. time to invest in your career. And it's, it's not always easy, man, but like, I'm not out here spending extra money on getting my hair done or getting my nails. Done. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I, I do the bare minimum and that's paying my bills, making sure I have healthy food to eat, um, putting gas in my car and, and that's it. You know, the rest of my time is focused on training I'm actually in school now as well. I'm pursuing a master's. So that's new, this fight camp. But um, yeah, I, I would say that waitressing is is probably the best job as a fighter. Yeah. Uh, man, you, <laughs> I remember when I, when I got the surgery on my face and I had that layoff. I remember I had to figure out, because now, like, not that I was making a lot of money fighting at the time anyway, but you know, I had to make ends meet too. And yeah. like you said, I just, I made a decision I'm not packing up and going home, but I'm going to have to figure things out. And yeah. I remember I had, I was, I was teaching privates, kind of teaching at the gym. I was working at a reptile shop and I, on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was bar backing in, yeah. in Fort Lauderdale. And you know what? But I was like, you know what? Whatever keeps me in the gym, nothing mm -hmm. matters right now. It's not always going to be like this. That's the other thing. Like, I know, yeah, it's tough. And it's like, you know, you're like, oh, pay my dues. I, I sometimes I used to love, like, I used to love knowing I was paying my dues. I used to love being sore yeah, and, and just putting it like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Everyone else would quit. I'm going home. Yeah. You know, we're going home. I'm not going home. And uh, actually there was a song I remember. I remember I was bar backing. I'm not really even into country music. And I remember there was this song out. I'm freaking doing dishes on a Friday morning in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, it was, uh, Sugarland, Sugarland sang it, and I forgot the name of it. But I, I mean, I'll have to mention it. But it was basically about paying your dues and then telling your parents not to worry about you. And then yeah. when you make it, you know, mom and dad, I'm buying you tickets. Come, you know. And uh, I, I, man, and I remember just hearing that song, and I was like, this is perfect right now. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, and you don't, you don't, like you said, you don't realize when you're in the middle of it. Yes, it's hard. Yes, there's tough days, but you don't. It's not until after where you realize, wow, and and you know, you sh people should allow themselves to do this. Wow, I'm really a bad mf'er. You know, I'm you know, I I did it. I, I hustled, and uh, you know, like like now, like in like you, I went back to school. Actually, I think you you went back for your master's right when I was finishing my associates. I think, or you decided you were going to go back for your master's. I actually just started. This is my first okay. semester. 
Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, thought, I thought that you, or maybe you were making the decision to go. Probably. And, and I remember thinking, that's so awesome. But like, look at you now. You know, like you came down, you were making it, now you're going to school to get your master's and you're still fighting. It's amazing, you know? And you just, you know, the survivors figure it out, you know? And that's, like, Carly Joe, I hope that helps, you know? You will, you know, you might not be, you might not do it the way we did it. You know, I didn't do it the way she did. She didn't do the way I did. But you're going to find your way to make it to where we're all looking to go, you know? I said that. Survivors figure it out because... Mm -hmm. You're not always going to have a plan. You know, I, I actually no. realized that. I did have a plan. It didn't hardly. work. <laughs> she said that she is a kid. And man, like, I cannot imagine doing all this with a child. But yeah. I do people that do it. And I don't know what advice I have for you in that sense. But um, man, like if you really want this and, and if this is what you love, you, you can find a way to make it happen. Uh, I will say that. It helps to have good support around you. I, there's no way I could have done this without people renting me rooms for a good price. I mean, some people even let me stay in their homes for free for a year. Um, I've borrowed people's cars. I've stayed on people's couches. You know what I mean? Like, and it hasn't been easy, man. But whatever you have to do, if, if this is what you really want, survivors, they, they make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, it's like, like I said, like, it's like, um, we're all going to the same place, but not in the same vessel, you know, like that's, yeah, that's basically, sure. you know, like that's, uh, like it, it's, uh, yeah, like, it's, like people make it happen, you know, you just, and it's like, like you said, I, I didn't have a plan, like I did have a plan, that didn't work out, and then, yeah. oh shit, look at this, look at this plan that I got now, you know, I think I'm on plan, like, E right yeah. now, you know, like, you know, and like now, like I'm paying a mortgage, <laughs> so, but, no, that's uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy, I'm really important to be able to adapt in this sport because like I said it's not easy especially when you're first starting out um, mm -hmm. a lot of sacrifices especially when you still have to work you have to pay your bills some people have kids I mean man it, it is not easy and I hope that you know whoever's watching this if you're just a fan that you you know listen and, and show some respect to your local fighters or, or fighters that you watch mm -hmm. on TV because Man, we we make a lot of sacrifices in order to do this. We do it because we love. It. Shoot, I'm saying again. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. No, that was on me that time. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, we like fighters make a lot of sacrifices. Like, like uh, we we just we just don't make the money that other pro sports make, or fighters just don't make the money that other pro sports makes. And it's just it's a very blue collar living until you become that five percent you know um okay. it, i had a very short window where i could have lived where i was living off fighting and even then i wasn't living off fighting like i was like right. you, you know, this is i knew that like i wasn't sure what was going to happen after that contract was up with bellator so i was like i gotta just keep hustling and seeing what's next and everything like that you know and just mm -hmm. you know, i was getting married and everything so it's like you gotta you know you just gotta you know it's not that like it's not that you can't sit back and, and smell the roses but like you just got to keep doing that until you make it to where your ultimate destination is, and uh, it's very important. It's very important. But uh, uh, anything else? So you're fighting for Combati, okay? At the end of March, can't wait. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to get down there for that. Um, any of your teammates got fights coming up? The ones you mentioned, maybe the ones that are coming in working hard. Um, man, some of the females. We have a girl fighting actually tomorrow for the LFA strawweight title. Her name's Jacqueline. Uh, she's actually one of our newer girls, but very, very talented grappler. So I'm looking forward to watching her. I'm sure she's going to get this belt and probably make her way to the UFC. So keep an eye on Jacqueline. Uh, right here, uh, out this door, we have Masvidal sparring, preparing for his big fight against mm -hmm. Colby. I'm sure you guys would all see that uh, mm -hmm. happening in the gym right now. But, um, yeah, man, we always have big fights going on, as you know. So. Absolutely. Daniel, and hello. <laughs> Sorry, someone just signed on. No, that's the other thing about that place. It's always a huge who's who to focus on. Um, yeah. Kayla, thank yeah. you so much. Uh, that's all I got, I guess, for tonight. I would really appreciate you coming on. I want to do for this sure. again, and I definitely want to do something training with you again. I really miss training with you. I would love that. You, dude, you've always been one of my favorites. I feel like <laughs> you were one of the first people to believe in me, and you always offered me nothing but support. So I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you. You know, I, I really seeing you there, it would motivate me. Look at this girl hustling. I could hustle too, you know. That's
Don't make me cry. I'm emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm cutting weight. I can't. I can't. Yeah, no, I, when I was cutting weight, uh, I just like commercials, <laughs> you know, like, like just like, yeah, right? Walmart commercials. Yeah. So, but uh, Kayla, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to talk to you before the fight comes on and then uh, before you fight. And then after that, we're going to do this again. Okay. Okay, cool. I can't wait. Thank you guys for tuning right. in.